Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's W9FFF. I'm the Ham Radio Dude. In this episode, we're going to discuss the Yezu FT65R. We're going to discuss some of its features, a little review of the product, and why you should buy this over a Baofeng radio. A few weeks ago, I took a trip out to Phoenix, Arizona, and I purposely brought no radios with me, and the whole reason for that was so I could buy more radios when I was out there. See, Phoenix, Arizona has the Ham Radio outlet stores, uh, specifically Peoria area, and I love going there so I can play with all the radios and I could actually talk with the people, interact, and come up with some ideas for these videos. So I ended up walking away with a few radios. I walked away with the Yezu FT65R and what I call its little brother, the FT4X, or maybe its little sister, the FT4X. But regardless, it was a great conversation I had at Ham Radio Outlet about these radios and maybe the advantages that they have over something like a Baofeng. The radio cost me $79.95 plus tax. You're probably asking yourself, what kind of features do I get for $79.95? First off, the Yaesu FT65 is a dual band radio. It is capable of 2 meters and 70 centimeters or VHF UHF. And it also has a weather alert on it as well as an FM radio. This radio is IP54 rated and what that means if you're not familiar is that some dust will actually get into the radio but it generally protects you from most dust as well as splashes. This radio should, from all angles, be splash resistant. I don't want to say splash proof. And what I mean by that is water could still get into the radio. This radio has three different power settings from low to high. You could use a half a watt of power, two and a half watts of power, and up to five watts of power. The battery included with this radio is a 1950 milliamp hour battery. So it is nice to have those power settings and being able to adjust them depending if you need the power or if you're just trying to conserve your battery. And this radio includes a three and a half hour rapid charger battery. This radio also includes a one watt output power speaker, which is nice. So when you turn this on and when you're listening, the audio sounds nice and crisp, even when you turn the volume levels up. One of the things I really like is the quick release key capabilities of this radio. This radio has the opportunity for four quick release keys labeled P1 through P4. And that's really nice. It makes things easy, especially when you're constantly using settings in the radio. Instead of going into the menu, you could just press whatever quick release key you need. The thing I really like about that is if you compare this to the sister or brother of the or, or the 65, the 4X, you'll notice that there is only two P1 and P2 quick release keys. And it's nice to have a couple extra ones. And both of these radios, but specifically we're talking about the 65 here, is programmable via the front panel display and the menu button which is on the side of the radio here. You could also program this via the SCU35 programming cable which is not included and cost anywhere from $20 to $30. You could make your own and if you check my other videos out there is a tutorial on how to make your own. Other features of this radio include the capability for arts as well as a automatic power off feature which you could set your radio to a certain time frame where if it's not in use, it'll shut it off. One of my favorite features about the FT65, and I brought the FT4X in for comparison, but is this LED display feature. Now here I am in the menu, and you'll see as I go up and down the menu, I see multiple options within the menu. Whereas with the FT4, I'm only going to get one option per, per uh, you know, the screen. Because the, the dot matrix screen can only handle so many characters, whereas the LED, in theory, can handle way, way more characters. And so I really enjoy this. I think it's crisp and clear text. I, I really like the capability of being able to see multiple options on my screen. And so I'll go ahead and take the FT4X and put it to the side. I'll shut it off here. But that's just one of the awesome features of this radio. I can go into the fact that when I hold this radio and I'm comparing it to like a Baofeng, for example, or a cheaper Chinese radio, this radio has a feel of more quality. Even though this radio is also made in China, it has a quality feature. I mean, if you look at something like this Baofeng right here, and I go into these plastic clips all the time because these things piss me off, but this plastic clip, I could like just bend it, it's cheap. This one is like thicker and it's just, it's made for durability. And that's my opinion on the whole radio in general is there's a quality to it that you just don't see with the cheaper or less expensive radios. You know, I could, I could hit this and I'd feel okay even dropping it. I don't think there would be much of a problem. Going to the antenna, 
I have the same connections or the same adapter types as the Baofeng. So what that means is, is I could, if I had a bunch of Baofeng antennas or aftermarket antennas for my Baofeng, I could easily use them with this radio. That makes it really nice and convenient. Unfortunately, my MFJ antenna analyzer is not working correctly. So I cannot show you the difference between the antennas in the Baofeng and the Yaesu FT65s, but I promise I'll get that to you guys in another video. But I will say that while transmitting with this radio, I get excellent audio reports. People automatically jumped out and said, hey, what did you do different to your setup? It sounds amazing. And I think I might be able to demonstrate that. Give me just a moment. Right, so as I was filming the video on this FT65, I wanted to compare the audio levels to uh, the Baofeng to show that uh, the mic gain on here, the sensitivity is really good. And when I keyed up this Baofeng radio, it actually fried out my camera system. So another thing is, is the filtering in these radios is absolutely amazing. And, and I would show you the spurs emissions on the Baofeng versus the Yezu, but I don't want to fry any more equipment. And I know people can argue that maybe the shielding on the camera wasn't great or there was something in the camera that wasn't properly shielded. I, I get it completely. My argument would be, well, it fried with the Baofeng and not the Yezu. And I've seen other people with Baofengs who have lost power supply units and backup power sources and stuff like that. So just going off the history, I believe that the problem was the Baofeng. And I have checked the spurs emissions before and they were definitely not within regulations. So what any good amateur radio operator would do is that's going in the trash. Let's talk about the EA's UFT65 some more though. Let me go ahead and minimize this because there's no reason to see a screen that's going to show nothing because it's frozen and fried and it won't ever turn on again. But the CAZU FT65, the one thing I don't like about this radio that really bothers me about this radio is this push to talk button right here. You'll see that it comes out on an angle and I'll try to demonstrate that the best I can. But it comes out on an angle and then it goes in on a rapid angle. It makes it very hard, in my opinion, to hold in your hand any which direction you can this is probably the easiest way for me but what i find is the spring or whatever is in here is really hard to press it makes it very difficult to stay keyed down and many times i get reports that hey you you quick on keyed and quick keyed again i mean i have no intentions to do that i apologize it's just something in the radio i i don't wonder if i couldn't open this radio up and maybe find like a little mod or a hack or a trick to to fix it Another thing I do like about this radio I, I just should mention is how easy it is to program it. I kind of already went over it really quickly and I will make a video in the future on how to program this radio via the front panel display. If you're very curious or have any interest, I have a video out for the FT4X where I go step by step on how to program it. It's about a 10 minute video, but it's, I think, very detailed. And of course, programming with the programming cable is really easy. You, you plug it into the radio, you can load up your favorite software, whether it's Yezu software, RT systems, or Chirp. And you could have the radio programmed in just a few minutes. I noticed with Chirp, there is a warning in the front that says, hey, this software was only tested by one person with one radio, use at your own risk. I accepted it, everything turned out fine. And I apologize that this video is kind of getting cut short because it's hard to show review when I can't really show the radio. But what I will say, it's just an overall review of this radio is the microphone is better. It's more sensitive. So people hear me better. Uh, I don't like these buttons. I think this button should be improved. The front panel display is easy to program things. Uh, the antenna is way better than the standard antenna you're going to get with a bow thing. And if you have some aftermarket antennas, they'll fit on here. That's kind of cool. And that's actually another point too. You talk about the antenna, right? And so people go out and they pay $25, $30 for a Baofeng radio, if not more, because there are different models. And then the first thing that most of them have to do, because the antenna is horrible, is go buy an antenna, which is $25, $30. So right there, you're already at, say, $50 to $60. Why not spend the extra, say, $10 for the FT4X, or maybe you pay the extra $20 for the FT65, depending on what your needs are. So it, to me, it makes financially logical sense to buy the Yezu radio, especially when you consider the factor of losing expensive equipment because you had a radio that was poorly made. Not to mention the investment is almost the same when you factor in the qualities. Now, one thing I will say about the Baofeng radios is they come with a programming cable. I was very disappointed that Yezu, who's trying to compete with the lower end market, didn't include a programming cable, but I made one for less than five or 10 bucks.
So at the end of the day, would I choose the FT65 over, say, a Baofeng? Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. However, I might actually want to choose the FT4X, which is probably a later video. But there are reasons for that. For example, the fact that it's more compact. But all around, if you are a new amateur radio operator looking to get into ham radio on the VHF and UHF bands, you should probably consider this radio before you consider any Baofeng for the reasons I've already previously mentioned. And you saw what happened to my camera equipment. And of course, the overall build quality I mentioned, uh, you know, the nice clip here, the really thick plastic, everything seems durable. And I, again, I love that LED readout. I think it's a very clear readout. It makes it easy for me to see. Guys, I think that's going to be it for the video today. Uh, I really appreciate you tuning in. I hope you had the opportunity to, you know, watch my video, maybe learn a couple things. Hey, send me suggestions in the comments. I'm willing and more than happy to do reviews on videos or just talk about whatever you guys would like to hear. But until next time, and hopefully I'll have a new camera then, this is W9FFF73.